This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, welcome back to another fabulous, fabulous episode of the Author You to Your Guide to Book Publishing podcast that I've had the pleasure of hosting for six years. And that with me, we have someone who has been a guest before. I thought it was long overdue to bring her back because between Jackie Lappin and I, we are going to give you a variety of ahas, insights, awesome tips, and how-tos for you as an author to take your book to another level in book sales, and it's called Speaking. So with me, Jackie Lappin is the creator. She's the founder of what's called Speakertunity. So I love that play on opportunity. Speakertunity, she's a leader in helping authors and coaches and speakers and entrepreneurs, and you are an author entrepreneur, or an authorpreneur, we'll knock off the intro, um, to connect with with followers um, around the globe. She's an expert at aiding them to get booked, and we will talk about her Speakertunity program um, before our hour is over to, today. But what I want to do is get into elements of her toolbox. I want to get into elements of, you know, what, what are the networks out there that we should be paying attention to, which is always really important with that. So, let, first of all, Jackie, welcome to the program again. I'm delighted to be here, Judith. It's always fun when we can hang out together. I, I know. I love it when I have comrades <laughs> that, that I get to play with um, a little bit, and, you know, especially a topic that I know in and out, and I've written a book that I have just done a full-blown revision of that will be out in March to, uh, you know, how to create a million dollar speech, which is, you know, the same title, but lots of variations in it. And I'm making the, the last update today as as you are listening, all of you to it, to what I call the absolutely essential, your speaker one sheet you've got to have. So, and because I'm updating mine, I do it at least every two years. I update my kind of stuff um, that goes out. So, Jackie, I want to dive into the who, what, where, and why kind of um, as we kick this off. So let's start with who should be speaking? Anybody that needs to get in front of an audience to grow a business to sell a book, essentially. Um, And those are different kinds of audiences. We're talking about, you know, radio shows, podcasts, virtual summits, virtual networking, um, obviously live and virtual speaking opportunities. There is just a plethora of opportunities out there that are ways for you to get in front of the audiences that are going to be that love you and become your raving fans for life. And 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 that's the way to do it. And I'm just going to do here's the asterisk here. Speaking is the number one way to sell books. Number uno out here. It's how I sold a million copies. Um, Jackie, who works with a lot of people, see that once they start getting out in front of people, whether it's virtual or in person, books move. Right, Jackie? You bet. There is no question. It is the opportunity to create that no like, and trust factor, um, to intrigue people, to get them to feel desire to have what you're talking about or more of you, essentially, if you're offering some kind of coaching program. Mm-hmm. Oh, and actually, a lot of people don't think of themselves as coaches, but guess what? If you're speaking, you are coaching them along the way. Maybe you just don't realize that. Well, and um, even and, when you have a book that's a memoir with a message, mm-hmm. that's also a powerful um, induction to get people to get your book. It doesn't have to be um, a straight nonfiction how-to. 
any time that you're providing somebody some kind of insight and wisdom, even if it's through your own story, you have something mm-hmm. that, is, that is of value to them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jackie, I actually came out with, uh, I did a full-blown revision last year of my story, and the title is When God Says No, Revealing the Yes When Adversity and Loss Are Present. And you're absolutely right. Um, for me, it's about resilience. It's, you got to get up and get going again every time you get knocked down. If you don't, you don't get up. It's that simple. So, yeah. um, and you can do that coaching. You can do people. You can give encouragement. You can do so much more um, and and help pull people out of the pit sometimes they land in. All right. So you talk about, uh, a lot of people don't think the podcast world is speaking, but in effect it is, isn't it? Oh, absolutely is. It's an opportunity to have an hour commercial for you, essentially, through speaking to an audience. Now, the, really, the only difference is they're asking you questions, which, if you're wise, you're providing them those questions, as opposed to just presenting without the prompting. Um, uh, when I did my last book, which was the best spiritual book of the year at the International New Age Tra- Trade Show, Practical Conscious Creation, Daily Techniques to Manifest Your Desires, that mm. book, I did a 100 podcasts and radio interviews on it. By the time I did it, I was so proficient at delivering the answers that standing on a stage was a breeze. It just came and flowed because I'd done it so many times to audiences uh, over podcasts. So yes, podcasts are a great way to start if you have any of that stage fright concern uh, or you're trying to get your messaging right, and then you can move into speaking. But frankly... If you're trying to to market any resources or your book on a you know on a wide scale level, you need to be doing both. Mm-hmm. I, I love um, the word messaging. So let's can can we focus on that a little step? Because I think that would, there is not an author who uh, I have encountered, and I actually don't care how proficient they are, how many times books they've written, how many times that don't stumble. They don't stumble. They they just can't get their head around the words or they can't get the syncing together. You have any tips to get that message tight? Well, essentially, you need to, to put it on paper. That's really the first thing. Get it on paper. Simplify it so it's fairly easy to remember. And then really start hitting those points again and again and again. And it'll become second nature to you. But you really need to hone it down to what is the essential message I'm trying to deliver? What are the three, two or three or four points that are most important about that? And then you can fill in around. But you really, once you have a clear idea of what your message is, then you can, you know, deliver it in many ways. For example, what we, our mes- clear messaging is we help leaders, experts, and authors get on more stages faster and easier so that they can get to more book sales and revenue faster. And quicker and successfully. How's that? Yes, right. <laughs> I'm exactly. Add that on. <laughs> so, you know, you can hone it down to a sentence and then start elaborating. Okay, so what's the next point? What's the next point? What's the next point? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, and I've always wondered, what's the fear uh, of that, I, my experience is so many of them feel they need to give all the backstory that got them to their point where they don't. I well, mean, actually, it's going to turn people off in a lot of ways. Well, if, if that if you're just talking about your messaging, that's mm-hmm. really about what you're delivering. But your signature speech and your podcast are places where you do need to to deliver your your story. Your signature speech, in fact, should have an arc that involves yes. delivering your, your rags to riches story, where, how, mm-hmm. how, how you hit the depth, how you learn to solve the problem, and then how you're going to be teaching it to other people. So, yes, your own story is an integral part of that, engaging people. And, in fact, it's the stories that sell from stage. It's what people remember most. So when you're writing a presentation, it's really great to stick in anecdotes or case histories from people that you've worked with, or how, you know, this methodology changed your life. You want to use those stories within the presentation, but 
not in your messaging. The messaging is what is it that you're trying to get people to understand, that you are leading them to a better place, and then what are some of the, the key ways that you're doing it. I hope, um, as Jackie said, what she had just said, you get your head around this, all of you, because this is where I see the stumbling happen. They they want to get their 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 story, that signature story, as she refers to it, into the front end to kind of introduce you to the message. And what we're saying is, no, that comes later. That's after some of that trust gets developed. That That's after that what you've ever thrown out is your messaging point. Um, instituted at, gee, I want to hear more. Tell me more about this. Would you agree, Jackie? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right, so, and so and your, your, yeah. your introduction should mm-hmm. also begin, that's where you begin starting to deliver your message. When you turn it over to the host or to mm-hmm. the uh, MC to introduce you, mm-hmm. uh, it should start there and then carry through as them- thematically throughout your presentations. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the most successful speakers, and we're gonna we're coming up to our first break, was Bill Gove, who I worked with. It seemed it's well, I can say decades ago in storytelling. And one of the things that Bill says is, you know, your talk is always about what part of what brung you to whatever you are. But in his introduction, and I'm so glad you said this. His final line on his introduction that he had his host say. If Bill doesn't tell us about a, the, some of the wacko encounters and stories that he's had in his speaking career, we won't let him leave. And and that opened him up to go into some off-the-wall crazy story that had everyone rolling. And he owned us. In three minutes, he owned the entire audience. With that, we'll be right back with this is Jackie Lamb. Lappin, the founder of Speakertunity. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you? Or another? Author You shows you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual Author U extravaganza. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing. Author U is the premier authoring resource in the country, creating community, education, guidance, vision, and success for the serious author. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author You, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author You today at AuthorU.org. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. So, you know, you mentioned your your podcast. I know that you have something that you do called the Conscious Media Relations uh, Radio Podcast Tour. So we, we don't want to leave today without kissing on that. But one of the things, since you have focused so much um, in adding podcast onto it, 
let's let's talk about a few tips on on finding the right ones and 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 reaching out and getting booked. Sure. So um, there's a lot of different ways that you can find your podcasts. Um, and, you know, don't overlook radio, by the way, and Internet radio, because those are still powerful resources. But to go to podcasts, you're going to go to iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and look in the channels, basically, on the subject matter that applies to you. And then go through those channels and make a list of those shows. But here's the challenge with dealing with um, all of what they call these aggregators, these podcast aggregators, um, or podcatchers as they call them, is they never give you any contact information. So once you identify the show and the host, now you have to go find the host's personal website, or if there is a show website separate from what's up on, on those uh, aggregators, and then see if there is either an intake form or a, play, a way to get an email, or if you know, all else fails, send your pitch or ask for an email in the contact form on their email list. That's one of the reasons why we did, we've, we've done a couple of different things. Um, we've created two resources at SpeakerTunity, one called SpeakerTunity Radio Insider, which gives you all kinds of life-enhancing radio shows. Um, and the other side is SpeakerTunity Radio Insider for Business, which gives you all the uh, B2B radio shows, 40 of them each a month, so that you can go after them yourself. But the, you know, finding them and getting them is a challenge, and it takes us a long time to go reach out to those, which is why we're trying to make it easy on people. And then, as you talked about, Judith, we also do a radio podcast tour where we introduce authors to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts at the same time um, with a minimum guarantee of 30 interviews. But what we do is we add in the sequences of podcasters in your niche, so if it's relationships or if it's business or if it's, um, you know, personal growth and spirituality, whatever it is, you know, it all goes in there because, you know, the more likely you are to focus on the ideal shows for you, the more likely you are to get on those shows. They need to be in your wheelhouse. They need to be taking guests like you already are, you know, in your genre in order for them to likely say yes. You can waste a lot of time just saying, oh, I want to be on these giant podcasts, these big guys, and go after them. And a lot of times they don't even take guests from outside. They only take people that they know or they pick people they want. And um, you're going to get disappointed. So you really need to build your, re- your, um, your history with those podcasts that are what I call low-hanging fruit in your area, in your niche, that are going to love what you want and whose audience is going to love what you want. Mm-hmm. Which I love. All right. So it's it's again you have your have your message uh, it tight because if when you go to these and they ask you to do a submission, if you have something really very tight in a sense or two, you will make the host do a happy dance. I'm going to guarantee it. <laughs> well, and there's a couple of ways to pitch yourself. One, you can do it with a proposal, you know, with a pitch letter that defines what the story and what the hook is, and that can be up to a page, page and a half. And then there's new, something new called a podcast introductory sheet, which is a glossy one sheet that has um, your bio and then the four or five topics that you speak on and a couple of testimonials. We actually do those. We'll do the design for those over at SpeakerTunity. You can just pick from a template and colors and then fill in the form and then we'll get it back to you. But it's the new way to pitch podcasters. You can either send one or other, or you can actually combine the two and attach the podcast intro sheet when you send your pitch letter. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love that. So, Jackie, you've already mentioned SpeakerTunity, so let's just tell people what the website is. It's SpeakerTunity at Speaker, S-P-E-A-K-E-R, then Tunity, T-U-N-I-T-Y dot com. And where would they look on your website for... Well, actually, uh, we have I mean, a lot of different resources, and if they're looking yeah. for either a speaker one sheet, which is what you present to somebody you're trying to get booked by to show them how what a fabulous uh, you know professional or expert that you are in your field, or a podcast introdu- introductory sheet, you're going to look under speaker tunity sheets. Every one of our products or resources has its own little um, special area on the website and a cute little logo. Each one has a cute little logo, and the speaker tunity sheets logo is bright red. Got it. All right. So go to speakertunity.com, find the bright red logo, (laughs) and click on it. 
um, and see what this does um, for you. All right, so we're there. Um, and then, it, it, and, I, and I can't reinforce um, that when you create your one sheets, whether it's a speaking one sheet, now it's a podcast one sheet, um, I know book one sheets, those need to land on your, the P, a PDF format on your website that when you're under your like your media tab under your speaking tab that that people who are hunting around for you or a host they could easily find and say hmm is this the person for me so i'm just going to suggest that to you on that all right what about um niches that you you already said that i i heard this on your the pot your podcast one sheet you know have your maybe multiple areas should you concentrate, have multiple areas, or should you just stay kind of focused on one? Well, I, th- that's a con- you know that's really more along where where are you in your stage? Um, you know, if you have the available time, you should be mm-hmm. looking at podcast radio shows. That's basically a combination. Um, also at virtual summits, but. In, with virtual summits, if you don't have a, a big opt-in list, that's going to hurt you. You need to have somewhere between 2,500 or more to get on a lot of summits because many of them have a minimum list size. Not all, but many mm-hmm. of them do. So mm-hmm. if you're really at the beginning of your journey, a virtual summit is going to be hard for you to get on. But if you already have a, a good-sized list, then a virtual summit or many of them is a great way to to promote. You're cross promoting with uh, dozens of other hosts uh, or uh, guest presenters, and you're being attracting new people into your community, driving your opt in list. That's really an opportunity, and then you get to meet a whole new audience, deliver your your message, and offer a free gift to get them into your um, your community, and sell your book from that opportunity as well. Get them to go over to Amazon and grab your book. Now, speaking from stages, today, uh, yes, there are some stages that are going back into the uh, physical rooms um, with this most recent COVID wave. You know, some of that's retrenched. But um, virtual speaking is not going away. Many, many, many of the uh, local chapter organizations, for example, have found that it is much more advantageous to continue doing virtual opportunities. And those are evergreen speaking opportunities. They've got an opportunity for you every month for, you know, to, to, to be booked on their, on their, on their uh, stages. And a lot of times they are, um, you know, they've got larger crowds than they've ever had before because they can draw from anywhere in the country. Some of them are finding that, you know, it's just obviously beneficial because they don't have to put out money for the rooms. Um, and they like the engagement that happens when they're online. So you're going to find that speaking at meetings, venues, and association is going to comp- really be a, an enriching opportunity. It's also a great place to get your feet wet before you try, try to talk at conferences. Um, and when you talk at conferences, big conferences, you really have to have your presentation nailed down and you really have to know that this is uh, that you are right for this audience because you are going to be competing with a lot of other people that went on a conference stage. So it has to be absolutely top flight, ready to go, and you have a track record so that the the conference leaders know that you you've already worked at building your speaking uh, gifts so that you are the right uh, right for their audience. They're much more picky than um, a mm-hmm. you know, meeting venue or association it tends to be. Another nice thing about meeting venues and associations, they love to book locals. So even if it's virtual, they really give preference to people in their community. So do not overlook really saturating your own market as well as you can go out and reach to markets all over the country in your specialty niche because now you can speak anywhere. Uh, so that's a great tip. A lot of people, well, it used to be, um, you know, coming from the world where that there was in, in the speaking business where just we were in person speaking at conferences, associations, conventions, etc., is that there was no glory in the hometown, Jackie. Do you remember those days? Yes. Yeah. You know. Oh, oh, you know, you could you could be in, for example, San Diego or San Francisco or Orlando, huge 
huge uh, convention cities. And if you were from there, there was almost like, oh, well, then, you know, you're not out of town. You're not an expert out of town. And that has flipped, I think, significantly in the last decade where um, it, it was irrelevant flying you in because they want now people don't want to fly you know, or pay the money for flying and putting them up if they can bring people in from the local side. So that's always a plus to know for all of you to understand. Take advantage. And I know speakers, Jackie, who have made a living of becoming um, experts of of stepping in within an hour if all of a sudden someone is ill or doesn't make it or whatever. We, I can be there to do a presentation for you if there is a no-show. And well, that, agreed. And one of the w- great local. ways to take advantage of what you were just talking about is con- is contact your local convention and visitors bureau. Yep. Because um, they are going to be having speaking speak, speaking uh, opportunities that pop up with conferences that are coming to town. And like you said, they don't want to fly somebody in. They might like to use somebody locally. So if, if you could look six months in advance and start contacting those those um, meeting coordinators for the meetings that are already booked to come to your town, that is a good opportunity to start building an, mm-hmm. a, 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 a good, you know, good conference platform for yourself. All right, let me add to this. A lot of these, Jackie's mentioned kind of a gold mine here, that a lot of convention bureaus have mixers for meeting planners all the time. And you might want to just call and ask them, you know, what do they do? Because this is this is called networking, and sh- this is where you do want to show up or see if they're, if they're doing online events, you participate. And this is part of your marketing expense for time, energy, and sometimes money. So I would, I would suggest this for you. All right. Jackie, you have done some, um, or we're we're going to uh, jump into our next break, but I would love to have you kiss on TEDx um, a little bit. They're all over the place that, um, you know, is this worth their while? Are there some techniques to pitch to it? It's certainly evolved over time. Um, what's is the is the branding worth it? All right. So with that mm-hmm. said, we'll be right back. It's author you, your guide to book publishing. My guest today is Jackie Lampin. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. So why Jackie and I were chatting, which is always fun, offline um, and supporting our fabulous sponsors, um, that she's going to throw in a little discount coupon for all the listeners. And it is, if you'll write, this is to get on the, the speaker 
Um, and this would this also apply to the um, podcast one sheets, Jackie? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, just to and understand, the speaker one sheet is a two pager, and the mm-hmm. podcast sheet is a one pager. That's fine. All right. So it's here. It is. Get out of your pencils. It's save twenty sheets plural, and you capitalize the s in in save, and the first s in sheets. Did I get that right, Jackie? Yes. Okay, there you go. Save 20 sheets, capitalize S and S in save and sheets first letter. In the and word. if there's any ch- challenge with that, all you have to do is reach out to me at Jackie at speakertunity.com. Right, there you go. So Jackie, J A C K I E at speakertunity.com. All right, let's move along. Um, that TEDx, I kind of teased with that. Um, they're all over. They are, you know, I never know which way to go. I, and I will tell, I have not done a TEDx talk. So I'm one of those that just kind of does my own thing out there. But Jackie convinced me. Maybe. So a TEDx (laughs) is a branding vehicle. One, it's going to help get the word out about who and what you are. And two, it opens more opportunities for other speaking gigs. Because when speaker when you're booking yourself, you're going to include in your pre-proposal pitch letter a link that says, "Here's a, a link to my my TEDx," and they're going to see you on stage, and they're going to see your dynamic, and that is really a great way to put you at the head of the line when a speaker booker is looking at who they're going to bring in. But yes, there are all kinds of wonderful things that can benefit from a TEDx. You can send it to clients and prospective clients. You can, you know, certainly it can go viral, but you have to help it go viral. By and large, it doesn't do that on its own. Um, and you um, can use it as when you're presenting, you're, you're, you're trying to get into, say, a corporate gig or something like that, you can send that that shows, again, your level of professionalism. It's a benefit to you to have one of them. It is not an essential, and it is not a place to sell your products and your services and your book. Um, it's an opportunity to create what they say, um, a, ideas worth spreading, uh, some concept that is novel, even if it's maybe a subject matter that's been done before, but it has a novel t- take on it. Um, and they're supposed to, they shouldn't be any more than 18 minutes. In fact, that's what it, they said, mm-hmm. but from what I understand from my TEDx experts, they actually are only about 11 and a half by the time you get done with introductions and things. Um, and, um, you know, the, a real key to it is finding the ones that are right for you. So TEDx is like to have people that are local simply because they want you to come in from rehearsals, and they also do some coaching with you. So um, they, they don't want you having to fly in for each of these or miss them because you can't get a flight in. So that's one thing. So you want to have them within proximity so that you can drive to it. It's one of the reasons why we created at Speakertunity a uh, TEDx directory that is divided by um, either uh, dates so you can see the ones that, because they usually book about five or six months out, um, and two, you can see what's local to you, what's in the near neighboring states that you can get to uh, within a, you know, without a, a big, long airplane flight. Um, and so, um, so you really want to focus on those and many of them are themed. So you really want to find the ones that are, that are, or take whatever you have to fit the theme. And then there's quite a process to get in. Usually there's a form that you have to fill out and then they're going to want a couple of minutes potentially of, of you on video so that they know, you know, that what they want, like to you, to you have two minutes talking about what it is you're going to talk about. So that they know that you would how well you appear on 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 screen or on stage. So all of those are kinds of the things that are in the consideration of where you book yourself. And then if you really want to make sure that you get on a good on a TEDx stage, I encourage you to work with a TEDx coach. There are dozens of them out there. Somebody that's going to help you develop the right uh, presentation, the right titling for it and descriptions of it the right uh, is, uh, delivering skills, and then the ins and outs of getting on those. We're actually building a training program on how to get booked on a TEDx, not how to deliver one, but how to get booked, and that will be available on Speakertunity somewhere probably mid-year. So, so. Jackie, how, how many cities 
host a TEDx event? There are right now about 260 of them in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, at one point, there were more, but what with the pandemic and all of that, uh, mm-hmm. and the, mm-hmm. and the uni- universities and campuses who host a lot of them and high schools, the numbers have really reduced. Mm-hmm. And is there it, could there be a strategy? I mean, there is you know some of the big cities. Uh, I would think I'm, I'm from Denver um, that they might be more competitive to get into than a a a second tier city. No question uh, about it. No okay. question about it. The, and it, the and more prestigious so, and the bigger markets, mm-hmm. the more challenging it is to get in. But again, mm-hmm. if you're local, it gives you a leg up from people, for, from other people from outside the community trying to get into that TEDx. Mm-hmm. Well, in the early days, I remember seeing some TEDx um, uh, deals, and it looked like the audience was teeny weeny um, on some of them. But, you know, I came away with maybe the cameras. They're certainly much more sophisticated, the layouts, the backdrops, all those today. Well, but, and today some of them are using, using small crowds, a social distancing, mm-hmm. in order to accommodate what's going on in the pandemic, pandemic. crisis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're talking in front of a stage, and there's a, some audience, but it isn't the numbers that you would have done previously. Mm-hmm. So, but I think that, you know, I like the idea, if you want to go down this avenue, that you really pursue the second tier, third tier. I mean, I, you know, I don't know how they're all nailed down. Certainly, you know, New York's going to be huge. Chicago will be huge. um, That kind of thing. But, you know, maybe there's something going on in Omaha that might not be so huge um, that you might have a, a better opportunity uh, being selected if your pitch is correct and all that, uh, because it's really the TEDx name. You're not going to say, as seen in Duluth, um, it's going to be TEDx. And, right. Am I thinking correctly, Jackie? Or Yes, absolutely. All right. you're saying is, see my TEDx talk, and you don't have to say it's in Duluth. Mm-hmm. I mean, and they'll, mm-hmm. they probably will see it only because some of the many of It'll the stages the have their branding yeah. on on the you know on the yeah. background, so they'll see it yeah. TEDx Duluth. But, but your, you don't have to your, position that when you go out with it. Correct. And as you pitch out, and here's the plus where Jackie said, I mean, the rules are it's like 18 minutes or less. And by the time all the other, you know, add-ins, front end, back end, and all that, you, you know, you, you could be at 11 and a half. Um, that for the marketplace in speaking, that this could be very effective to introduce yourself. Uh, because someone who is really seriously trying to find the right person for a specific topic, you know, they they figure out very quickly, okay, I can fast forward here, let's get it started, you know, to do those kind of things, that that you could come in and actually have eyeballs on that wouldn't normally do it if they had to go through a whole hour. So just just saying, I think it's a good way to go. Thank you. I think that's good information. Let's talk about um, what's happened in, in the pandemic. We've we brought the word up that a lot of markets changed. A lot of in-person events disappeared like dinosaurs. Um, whether some of those are coming back, I know Jackie. I've done some live events, and um, we've some of my events I keep very small anyway, no more than thirty-five people, so it was no big deal. For me to handle and I've always spread tables out so because people bring their computers and almost like their kitchen sink sometimes at these events um, that they can have working space so that all worked well and I'm thrilled to say during last year when I did live events no one no one Jackie got sick no one that's great um, on that so I'm very conscious of that Um, and the biggest event I did had 220 people for a gala dress up dinner induction. No one got sick at that either. So it's author you, your guide to book publishing. My guest today is Jackie Lampin. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these.
Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and easing at thebookshepherd.com. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider, and sometimes even by the author. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, with me is Jackie Lappin. She is the founder of Visionary for Speakertunity.com, which I'd recommend you explore. I wanted to let you all know that there was a special discount code that you could use, which says um, save 20 sheets. And that's for the speaker and the podcast sheets. And you capitalize the S on save and the S on the beginning of sheets and sheets is plural. So with that, I asked a question just before we went to our final break about um, offers. So how can Jackie, um, the best kind of offer uh, or a couple of strategies for offers when they're trying to get you for free? So there are a couple of ways when you're the best way to introduce somebody to something um, if you're doing free, there are two simple ones. Um, one is an ebook, and one is an opportunity to have a consultation with you. Some kind of free offer to speak with you so they can get a taste of what you're offering. And then you have the opportunity to sell them in that conversation, to enroll them in that conversation in the program that you offer. Now, if you're, there's actually a lot more than just those two ways to do it. We have a resource that's called 44 Ways to Seduce Your Next Client from Stage. that will tell you about all kinds of different ways that you can make a free offer from stage. And you can get that by going to speakertunity.com forward slash seduce. Um, and so the next thing that I was going to um, say is now that you're going to make an, a full offer from stage, you're better off to start with a small offer as you build up. So something that's 197 297 397 that also has an outcome, a promise of what they're going to get. Um, I do a presentation called 10 Speaker Bo- Bookings in 10 Days. That tells them what they're going to get. Um, you can do a whole series of you know, presentations, ba- I mean of um, offers, Based on what that people, what your clients are going to get out of the 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 um, program that you're offering, then once you're more established, then you can go up the line and start offering programs for two thousand dollars to up to ten thousand dollars. But you're better to start in that lower sweet spot that people feel really comfortable that in, in investing in and getting them into your community. Get, 
uh, improving your your enrollment skills and then moving up the chain. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to just loop back. I, I love the word she used, seduce. Isn't that a fun word? Um, that if you go to the speakertunity.com forward slash seduce um, and, and request there, she's got 44 ways to work with your clients for the next stage. So um, I would take advantage of that um, and doing that. And, and it's in a, in a little ebook form. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah. you got it and you can run with it. All right. So as we, you know, do our last few minutes together, Jackie, that I, I think it's really important to um, I want to kiss on one more time before we leave. And and all this is on the speakertunity.com um, and a form where they've got templates. If you've got a designer that you work with that has all your branding and all your goodies in there, I'm certainly going to steer you in that direction. But I think it's really essential that you have one sheet. So I've mentioned it. There's a speaker one sheet. There's a book one sheet. Now we have a podcast one sheet, which I think is kind of a cool idea. So thank you for sharing that. And Judith, sometime this year, we're also going to be doing book one sheets for people. So go to the bottom of Speaker Tunity, put your name in there, and we'll let you know when we're going to be veiling due to that. But I think some of the really key stuff that we do is the directories. Once you have those things, you've got to have some place to deliver them. And I'm yeah. really excited to talk about the fact that we have two really great resources for people. One is called Speakertunity Cities, where we've got 75 individual markets where you can get somewhere between 1,500 and 3,000 speaker leads just in your market. And then the other one is called Speakertunity Specialties. So if you just want to talk to a specific niche of meetings all across North America, like women's business meetings or spiritual centers or healthcare professionals or real estate people or whatever your niche is, um, then, in fact, we've got 60 different niches for you. And you can go to Speaker Tunity Speaker Specialties and find your niche. So I think that, you know, aside from all of our, our resources, those are the mm-hmm. two things we're the most proudest of. Well, I think understanding your niche is really important. Um, and knowing what, what what lane you belong in, one of the uh, one of the killers I found, Jackie, over the years that I have been doing uh, coaching in the publishing and book um, and speaking arena, is that they think their their talk, their book, their writing is for everyone, and that is the kiss of death. And I've always said, the more you niche yourself, the bigger your market becomes. Because you have the opportunity to become the go-to person. Really, the go-to person. And that's really what having that niche will do for you. So I'm going to really encourage you to do that. All right, so Jackie, we have a couple of minutes. I, I want to ask you about pitching skills. And about, I'm sorry? Pitching. Pitching. Pitching, pitching mm-hmm. skills. Um, what happens when people are, I just want to be writing. <laughs> I don't want to pitch myself. I don't want to sell myself. What kind of advice can you give out here? Well, there's a couple of things. One, you really have to be marketing. Otherwise, your book will be stuck in oblivion. Now, there's mm-hmm. a, you can do it yourself. You can get a virtual assistant to do it for you um, and train somebody to present you. Um, you can get a PR agency to do it. Or, again, um, Speaker Tunity has a strategic partner called Book For You Virtual Assistants. And all they do is go out and try to get you bookings for radio shows, podcasts, uh, summits, and or speaking gigs. Get our directories handed over to them, and they'll go do it for you. So there are lots of different ways, but you have to pick one path. And follow it through, whether it's you doing it, whether you direct somebody else to do it, whether you hire an agency, or whether you take take advantage of a service like ours. But if not, you're going to be looking around saying, why is my book not selling? Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I remember what my pal John Kramer has said when people said, well, how long do I have to market my book? Well, the answer is how long you want book sales. So what we're talking about, going yeah, back Yeah, you to, know, I'm still selling my two books, yeah. um, you know, and, and they were written 10, 12 years ago. 
because I I get periodically send word out on them or do do a promotion and people will respond. So, um, you know, it, it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. And it's not just one marathon, everyone. It's lots of marathons. Right. You know, some are going to be mini marathons. Some are going to be full blown. You may have to even go into an Ironman, so to speak. But (coughs) there are variables out here that you can do. And I love it that Jackie has said, you know, her books are, you know, uh, you know, a decade old. Oh, my God, Jackie. Uh, They're a decade old. And they're still selling, God bless them. Yeah, exactly. I have got um, in, in, in I don't speak in the healthcare field anymore because I'm not doing the traveling I used to do. I used to be, you know, if you want to talk about speaking, I was on the road 150 days a year. Whew. I spoke in all 50 states. I spoke in 20 countries, always on my books, always on my books. I remember carrying Jackie. I was speaking. I was doing a keynote for a marketing association in Finland. Mm. Um, and that's where I learned about you just strip your clothes off and get in the sauna with everybody. But that's a whole <laughs> other different story. And then you roll in the snow. Oh, my God. All right. That's another story, people. But that, um, uh, that, that you know, I, my first experience with having translators speaking at the same time and I could actually hear them um, as I spoke. And it was um, I brought over a whole suitcase with me of books. And I really didn't do my homework. I didn't think of doing my homework about what the price disparity was in foreign countries, in some foreign countries for book books. Um, And then that I priced them. I just kind of, you know, converted the U.S. price into the Finnish price. And, oh, my God, they gobbled them up so fast they were gone in five minutes, 70 books gone in five minutes. And I didn't realize that there was such a premium for American books at that time when I was there. I had another experience in Halifax where I was coming in to do a keynote, um, the opening program up in Canada. And I didn't realize, did not know, didn't do the research, that Halifax was one of the ports they looked for drug entries. I brought in two cases, two big boxes of books. They opened the boxes, went through every at Jackie picked up the books and shook them, shook them at the covers to see if there are any drugs in them. That was an experience. So with that said, <laughs> there are opportunities out here for you to sell a gazillion books and speaking is that number one way. So Jackie has created this amazing portal that will open entries and she's doing a lot of the homework for you. And I just think that is just a cool thing to do. So, Jackie, you're saying if you don't want to book yourself, there are options. You can get other people to do it. You mentioned a PR firm. I rolled my eyes when you said that because that I have never had um, – PR has no guarantees to it all. Usually when you have some of the other areas that people – this is what they're really focusing on, and they know who the meeting planners are. They know where the contacts are. You're going to be more successful. Do you have any comments on that? Any thoughts to add to that? Well, I think that, you know, one of the things is, uh, yes, I think that a a PR agency can be very expensive. Um, And I do think that it's very hard today to find an agent that will book you. That's one of the reasons we stepped into the breach with Sneakertunity and with book for you virtual assistants, simply because most of those people have gone out of the business. They can't make a living at it. So that's why you have to be responsible for your own bookings. One way or another, whether it's you, know, you doing it or you designated somebody else to do it. So, all right. Um, if so we, we let's close on that because I'm I'm actually the DIYer. I had a marketing assistant who did the follow up, but I always did the initial pitch to make the hook, develop the trust. Let's just get this thing done. So, with that, we're gonna have to close off. Jackie, thank you for a wonderful hour. Lots of information here for people who want to sell a lot of books and get recognition. Thank you. No, I'm delighted to connect with you. And for authors out there, we love to be um, your conduit to getting on more stages. There we go. We'll see you all next week on Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is Dr. Judith Bryles.